you'll find it here. Wind Creek, Bethlehem. Must be 21 years of age. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, John, this is Mike from Massapequa. I want a Kia. Hey, John, this is Rosie from Ozone Park. I want a Kia. Hey, John, this is Frank from Middle Village. I want a Kia. Hi, I'm John Stark. With over 200 vehicles in stock, our all-star team will always put your needs first, making sure you always get a slam-dunk deal here at John Stark's Kia. Lease a Kia EV6 for $299 a month with zero down payment. $949 due at signing. No security deposit required. 10,000 miles per year. Excludes tax, title, and MVP. Expires June 3rd. John Stark's Kia. Stand. Tall. Want to stay cool for the next two summers without spending a penny? Slow Mint has the AC offer of the century. Get 18 months with zero payments and zero interest. That's right. You don't need to make any payments for 18 months. Plus, Slow Mint's offers next day installation. Get an AC system installed as early as tomorrow with no payments for 18 months interest free. Call 516-932-7000 to get your free estimate. That's 516-932-7000. 18 months promo period. No payment, no interest, and no down payment offer. This offer is available through a third-party bank. On approved credit, interest is waived if loan is repaid in full during the same as cash period. Terms and conditions apply. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash ESPN to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash ESPN. Back here at Madison Square Garden, we get set for the start of quarter number four. The Knicks in that third quarter, Monica, doubling up the Pacers, 36 to 18 for the lead now, 99 to 91, entering the final 12 minutes. It's going to be imperative that the Knicks continue to remain connected defensively. It's the defensive effort that really stands out in that third quarter. Yes, it was great to have Jalen Brunson back on the floor. Yes, it was great to see Dante DiVincenzo knock down threes and Josh Hart score at the rim and OG Ananobi rocking the paint. But it was truly their defensive effort, particularly on the three-point line, that stood out. Pacers ball to begin the fourth. McBride has checked in for the Knicks. McConnell in the front court, Toppin pops out left side, drives on DiVincenzo, pass inside for Jackson, turn around in the paint, and he gets the roll. It's 99-93, Knicks up by six. Isaiah Jackson, to me, has sort of a similar... Uh, McConnell knocks the ball out of bounds away from Brunson, so it'll stay with the Knicks. They have three seconds to get it over the timeline. Jackson has a similar build and activity impact level as does a precious Achua, and they're both on the floor, so I'll be curious to see how this unfolds. Brunson inbounding in the backcourt. 19 seconds shown on the shot clock. Hart has to get it over, and he just does. Brunson now on the left wing, guarded by McConnell. Shot clock already down to 10. Hart comes out to set a screen. Brunson brings it towards the top of the arc. Picked up by Toppin. Between the legs. A couple of times. Slips through. Floats it up over Toppin. Can't go. Rebound tapped by Jackson to Toppin. Knicks are a little small with this lineup. As precious as true is, that's a five. Here's McConnell. Backdoor feed for Shepard. Up top. Jackson. Shepard gets it back on the right wing. Down the lane. Stops his dribble. Finds McConnell. 12 foot jumper is good. And the Knicks lead is 99-95. You knew that these Pacers weren't going away. So no surprises there. Back to back buckets to begin the fourth quarter for the Indiana Pacers. Steven Chenzo stops at the dotted circle. Finds a Chua. He's blocked from behind. Out of bounds. It'll be Knicks basketball, and the Knicks announcing that OG Ananobi has a sore left hamstring, and he is out for the remainder of the game. That's not good, but you hope that he can get right between now and Friday. Brunson inbounds on the baseline. Brunson was questionable to return in the first half. He has played the entire second as Steven Chenzo misfires on a right side three. A two of the offensive rebound in traffic. Out to McBride in the left corner. New shot clock for the Knicks. It's now down to seven. Here's Hart working from the right side against Siakam. Puts it on the floor, drives, slips through, switches to the right hand, too strong. Achua, another offensive rebound, but it didn't hit the rim. It's a shot clock violation. Josh Hart was irate after that one in terms of the contact. I'm not going to say that he is wrong about it, but the free throws in this one have been relatively even. And so if the conversation is the officials are going to miss some but call the game as even as possible, 10 free throws for the Pacers and 13, pa 13 free throws for the Knicks. 10 20 to go in the fourth. 99 95 Knicks. 
Here's Jackson, top of the arc, gives to McConnell just inside midcourt. Crossover dribble back towards the foul line. McBride trying to chase him. McConnell pulls up, 10-foot jumper is good. And that's six straight for the Pacers to begin the fourth quarter. Knicks lead by two. Pacers still showing that full court pressure. And remember, pressure the true and Josh Hart are matched up. Excuse me, Pascal Siakam and Josh Hart are matched up. McConnell pestering Brunson, drives right into him and finishes off the glass, plus the foul. Brunson to his feet, firing up the crowd here at the Garden. What a take by Jalen Brunson. It's basically a zigzag drill from the time he catches the ball deep in the backcourt till he gets all the way to about the three-point line until he can get to his right side and explode by T.J. McConnell. Isaiah Jackson thought he had an opportunity to come by and block the shot, but ultimately he turns this into a three-point play. 101-97, free throw coming, 9.51 to go in the fourth. Isaiah Jackson called for the foul, his fourth. Brunson's free throw is good, 102-97. And Brunson, despite sitting the entire second quarter, has 18 points. McConnell left wing, cut off by Brunson in the corner. Now he's one-on-one, up top pass for Jackson. One dribble, hands to Shepard. Right side pass to Yacom. Six seconds to shoot. Siakam, turn around. Jumper over Hart, in and out. Jackson taps the rebound once, twice, no good, but then a foul as Jackson working the offensive board. Falls to the floor, fouled by Deuce McBride, and it was in the act of shooting. I really, as we get a second look at this here on Garden Vision, Deuce McBride does get his right hand on Jackson's left arm as there's a group of guys going after that rebound. We're looking at the basket at which Jackson is shooting the free throws. The Knicks alumni, led by Stephon Marbury, not happy with that last foul call as Jackson misses the first. Is that Amari Stoudemire standing on the baseline? Yes, it is. I believe he's saying something to the effect of ball don't lie. There you go. He's giving Isaiah Jackson one of those looks as if to say, now you know you don't belong on that line. One more free throw coming for Isaiah Jackson. Third year man out of Kentucky. He missed them both. Hart grabs the rebound. Knicks lead 102-97, 9.25 to go in the fourth. McConnell guarding Brunson, waving off the screen. Brunson just inside the midcourt line. Now McBride comes to set him a screen. Shepard picks him up. Takes it for three. No good off the back of the rim. McConnell the long rebound into the front court. Bounce pass left wing. Neesmith chases it down. Turns. Bounce pass. Shepard on the left baseline. Cut off and tied up underneath. And a foul Ooh. is called against the Knicks. Oh, Foul man. on Jalen Brunson reaching in. Josh Tiven comes from across the floor. With the reaching call on the guard vision, Jalen Brunson isn't reaching at all. On the front side of that play, Precious Achua appeared to tie up Ben Shepard. On the back side, Brunson was called for a foul. Nine minutes to go. Pacers inbound. It's Siakam from the foul line area. Ball back 12 foot jumper is good. 102 99 Knicks with 8.50 to go. Josh Hart's going to bring the ball up, being guarded by Siakam, we just mentioned. Siakam pokes at the ball. Hart around and a Chua screen. Stops his dribble at the top of the arc. DiVincenzo trying to get open. Has the ball now. Coming up on 8.30 to play. DiVincenzo drives on the right wing, along the baseline. Kicks it up top. Hart, one second to shoot in the corner. DiVincenzo, three-pointer off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Neesmith. 8.20 to go. Pacers down three. McConnell left wing, guarded by McBride. Up top pass, Siakam. Now on the right wing, it's Neesmith. Neesmith gets it back. Drives through two defenders. Kicks it up for McConnell at the top of the key. Crossover around McBride. Flips it up and gets the roll in traffic. And the Knicks lead is down to one. Timeout, Nick. CJ McConnell has something to say to alumni row, we'll call it, after that play. He's got six points already in this fourth quarter. And he is working so hard offensively and defensively. So Tom Thibodeau calls timeout with 8.01 to play in the fourth quarter. And the Knicks clinging to a one-point lead. 102-101 Knicks in game number two here at the Garden. 
You're listening to New York Knicks Basketball on ESPN New York and the MSG Radio Network. When you drive a vehicle so reliable it's backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Visit your local Kia dealer today to see what you're capable of in a vehicle that inspires confidence around every corner. Kia, movement that inspires. Call 800-333-4KIA for details. Always drive safely. Limited inventory available. Warranties include 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain and 5-year, 60,000-mile basic. Warranties are limited. See retailer for details. Serving contractors, builders, and homeowners in the tri-state area since 1987, Brooklyn Window and Door is New York City's largest stocking dealer of quality Anderson Window and Doors. The professionals at Brooklyn Window and Door will help solve any of your window replacement needs or applications. Visit Brooklyn Window and Door's award-winning showroom to see the complete Anderson product line, including the 400, 100, A and E series. Anderson, built, backed, and serviced like no other window. Visit Brooklyn Window and Door at 185 30th Street in Brooklyn or call 718-WINDOWS. Get a double-digit bonus exclusively for Knicks fans from Food Bazaar Supermarket. Take $10 off your order of $50 or more when you shop online at shop.foodbazaar.com. Plus, your first delivery is free. Go to shop.foodbazaar.com and use promo code FOODSAVE10 for the largest selection of international foods and all-star lineup of the freshest meat, seafood, and produce. And $10 off your first order of $50. Use promo code FOODSAVE10 at shop.foodbazaar.com. Spectrum One is a big deal. You get Spectrum Internet with the most reliable internet speeds, free advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced security and privacy, and a free Spectrum Mobile Unlimited line with nationwide 5G included, all while saving big. For the big speed, big reliability, and big savings you want, get Spectrum One. Just $49.99 a month for 12 months. Visit Spectrum.com slash big deal for full details. Offer subject to change. Valid for qualified residential customers only. Service not available in all areas. Restrictions apply. Let's pause 10 seconds to allow stations to identify themselves on ESPN New York and the MSG Radio Network. This is your radio home for New York Knicks basketball. This is 98.7 ESPN. WEPN-FM, New York. Pat O'Keefe and Monica McNutt with you at Madison Square Garden. We've got 8.02 to go in the fourth quarter. A tight game. What else did we expect, Monica? 102-101 Knicks coming out of their own timeout. I was doing television this morning with my friends over at ESPN, my colleagues. They're paid to be my friends, sort of. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> as, am, as am I. <laughs> right? <laughs> I digress. And somebody pointed out that the Knicks series has been the best. It's like these incredible finishes. It's been competitive. And here we are. That has not changed. But I don't know about you, Pat. To me, there was a level of exhaustion after game one of this one that I don't know quite felt the same during the Sixers series. It was a grinded out game one victory for the Knicks having to come from behind in the fourth quarter to pull it out. Eight minutes to go here in the fourth. This time around, the Knicks trying to protect the lead in the fourth. 102-101 with the basketball. Brunson in the front court. McConnell guarding him. Brunson left-handed dribble towards the center of the court. Now brings it left wing. Shepard switches that onto him. Hart, right side, three-pointer. That's good. And Josh Hart, his first three-pointer of the night, puts the Knicks up by four. Right on time. He had knocked down multiple threes all throughout that Sixers series in many games. Here's Siakam driving on Achua. Picks up his dribble from the dotted circle. Tough jumper is good for Pascal Siakam. Impression of Achua was right there. High hand right there. Sound defense. 105-103, 7.20 to go. Precious Achua playing for OG Ananobi, who's out for the remainder of the game with a sore hamstring. Bounce pass Hart left side. His pass is deflected by Neesmith out of bounds. 7.10 to go in the fourth quarter. Knicks leading 105-103 as Tyrese Halliburton and Andrew Nemhard come back, replacing Shepard and McConnell. A really smart play by... Aaron Neesmith, he closed out with a high hand in that passing lane as the Knicks were trying to beat the Pacers on their defensive recovery. Brunson gets it back quickly off the inbound. Shot clock is down to five. Brunson cutting back door and is held. A foul with the shot clock winding down. Foul on the floor. Oh, excuse me. That's a kick ball inside the paint. Another infamous kick ball here <laughs> in this Knicks Pacers series. So the Knicks will inbound. Front court, left-hand side. 
Hart looking for an open teammate and finds Hartenstein. Seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Knicks by two. Brunson, right side of the arc, now guarded by Nemhart. Drives on him with the hesitation. Slips through, reverse layup is good. Oh, my goodness. The hesitation Jalen Brunson just put on Andrew Nemhart. Then the crossover dribble to slip to the other side. Ooh, 107-103, Knicks. Down to 6.40 to go in the fourth. Halliburton just back in the game. Cut off by Hartenstein on the left wing. Underneath hey, the wide open, count it, plus the foul off the glass. So, I don't hate that foul. But if you're going to do that, it's got to be a no layup rule situation. Not to hurt a guy, but you can't let this layup get off. Ty- this is set up because Tyrese Halliburton pump fakes at the three-point line, and the Knicks have been jumping at three-point shooters so badly all night that it throws them out of rotation. Then he's able to make a beeline bullet pass right into the gut of the paint where Miles Turner has been able to be efficient tonight. Misses the free throw, though. That was the third foul against Precious Achua. So the Knicks maintaining their two-point lead, 107-105. Under six and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Brunson left wing, guarded by Nemhart. Right-handed dribble. Crosses over a couple of times. Pulls up, straight on three-pointer. Knocks it down! The Brunson burner. 110-105. Six ten to play. Knicks up by five. Halliburton left wing, cut off by Achua. Dumps it into the post for Siakam. Backing in against Tart on the left block. Turns, and there's a whistle before the shot attempt. There's a foul on the floor against Josh Hart. Josh Hart just leaving everything he can out there. He's frustrated because the foul will go against him for bodying up Pascal Siakam. But Pascal Siakam clamped down on Josh's left arm with his left arm. Also the fourth team foul against the Knicks as Siakam drives the other side this time. Bounce pass up top. Turner fakes the three. Down the lane. Left wing. Nemhard's three is good. And it's 110-108. Knicks lead trimmed to two. 5.45 5.45 to go in the fourth. More full court pressure by the Pacers. Hart has to get it over the timeline. And does. Hands the ball to Brunson. Nemhart all the way up on Brunson. Brunson trying to split the defenders. And there's a whistle against the Pacers. That was the first time we saw the Pacers go to a full-out trap on Jalen Brunson coming off the screen. Fourth foul against Andrew Nemhart. The second team foul against the Pacers. Again, the Knicks have four team fouls, so they are in the penalty with 5.32 to go in the fourth quarter. Also worth noting, Pat, is Tyrese Halliburton is guarding Josh Hart. I like Josh Hart's opportunity to get straight to the rim. Brunson inbounds to Hartenstein. Right back to Brunson. Crossover dribble. Flip pass is stolen. Now Brunson gets it back. Pulls up for three. Straight on. No good off the mark. Hartenstein crashing the offensive glass. Kicks it out, but out of the reach of DiVincenzo and out of bounds with 5.21 to go in the fourth. The urgency with which Hartenstein and Precious Achua give him credit just crashed the glass is reminiscent of game two. And so the Knicks understand how big rebounding is as we're now entering clutch time in about 15 seconds. 5.15 5.15 to go. Halliburton pestered by DiVincenzo just inside the midcourt line. Crosses over towards the left side. His pass deflected and stolen by DiVincenzo. Outlet to Hart. He's got a chew of running. Hart keeps it himself. Falls to the floor. It's knocked out of bounds off of Aaron Neesmith with exactly five minutes to play and 19 seconds on the shot clock. I'm not sure how that one could have played out different. I had the thought that maybe Josh was going to send it upstairs for Precious Achua to go and get it. But Pascal Siakam and Neesmith were in an all-out sprint to catch up and disrupt whatever the Knicks were going to attempt to do. So I'm not sure they wouldn't have deflected an alley-oop attempt. Game one was tight. A four-point Knicks win. Game two. Knicks lead by two. And there's a foul inside as Brunson falls to the floor again. Going to be team foul number three against the Indiana Pacers. This one goes against Pascal Siakam, his third. So three seconds came off the clock. 4.57 now to go. Knicks will inbound again. Front court, right side. Siakam and Precious Achua having a conversation. They started the season as teammates north of the border in Toronto. Brunson inbounds to Hart, who cuts right side along the baseline. Leaves his feet by Hartenstein, who slams it home. 
Josh Hart attacking Tyrese Halliburton. There's no questions asked on that one. I like the strength, the conditioning, and the power of Josh Hart in that matchup any day and twice on Sunday. 112-108 Knicks. 4.45 to go. Nemhart circling towards the foul line. Right wing Siakam takes it back out. Nemhart and now Halliburton. Drives, pulls up, floats it from the foul line. It's good. 112-110 Knicks. Four and a half to play. Just his second basket since the halftime mark. He had one in the third quarter and now this one in the fourth. Brunson high post pass. Hartenstein into the corner. DiVincenzo right side. Knocks it down for three. Knicks lead 115-110 with 4.15 to go. That last possession with the Pacers sending a double team looked very much like the way the Sixers finished multiple games versus the Knicks. Emhart drives. Stops. Into the corner. Siakam, three, no good. Offensive rebound fought for. Siakam couldn't handle it. It goes out of bounds. And they're going to get a foul called against Precious Achua going after the rebound in the corner. That is Precious Achua's fourth. Pascal Siakam does beat him to this basketball. He makes an effort that is to be appreciated, but Pascal Siakam does establish position first. Not only a Chew is fourth, but as mentioned earlier, the Knicks are now over the limit. So it puts Siakam at the free throw line with 4.02 to play in the fourth. The Knicks leading by five. First one is no good off the back of the rim. Pascal Siakam in the playoffs coming into tonight, 47% on free throws. He lines up about a foot behind the free throw line. So it's essentially a 16-foot set shot. And he missed them both. Hartenstein grabs his 12th rebound. He has a double-double. Knicks with the ball, a five-point lead with 3.55 to play. Bounce pass Hart, left wing. Circling towards the top of the arc. Now Hartenstein on the high post. Hartenstein looking for Brunson. Bounces to him. Brunson pulls up. Right side three. Front rim no. DiVincenzo offensive rebound. One dribble underneath. A two and slams it home. Knicks by seven. 3.38 to go. Timeout Indiana. The Knicks have been so poised. Despite the Pacers now switching up their defense. We saw them put full court pressure on these Knicks throughout the course of this ball game. Now it's a little less of that and there are more traps. I believe head coach Tom Thibodeau called it fire pregame. They're patient, and then, of course, the offensive rebounding. That has been the signature of this team. This time, a guard in Dante DiVincenzo comes up with a big one so that one of your fours in Precious Achua could rock the rim. It leads to a Pacers timeout with 3.38 to go in the fourth quarter. Knicks 117, Indiana 110. New York Knicks basketball on ESPN New York and the MSG Radio Network continues after this timeout. The NBA playoffs are here, and the New York Knicks are in. It's time to hit the court with BetMGM, an authorized betting partner of the NBA. Download the BetMGM app and make every playoff game, every vital play mean more than ever. Find out why basketball fans love BetMGM, an official sports betting partner of Madison Square Garden and the New York Knicks. See BetMGM.com for terms. Must be 21 years or older to wager and physically present in New York or New Jersey only. Gambling problem in New York? Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467. 369. New Jersey, call 1 800 Gambler. At Audi Manhattan, experience best in class service in the heart of New York City. Conveniently located at 55th Street and 11th Avenue. Free indoor valet parking is available. Visit the Audi flagship store today. Here's a deal just for you. Enjoy complimentary Audi care with the lease or purchase of any new Audi. Shop 24 hours a day at AudiManhattan.com. Audi Manhattan, where luxury meets excellence. Have you ever driven across the Whitestone Bridge and wondered, who could possibly paint this? The New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association. That's who. With our local 806 partners, members of the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association work hard to ensure New York City's bridges, roads, and rails are safe, beautiful, and ready for the future. You've seen our work. The New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association partnered with the New York Department of Transportation on the iconic Brooklyn Bridge, applying new coatings seen by thousands of people and captured in selfies every day. That's just one of the many pieces of iconic steel structures that the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association has helped revitalize. Every day you see subway stops, bridges, highway ramps, and steel structures restored and painted by us. We're the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association. Adding a little color to the Big Apple. 
To learn more about our association and career opportunities, visit nyssspca.net. Discover what happens when rugged capability meets true performance. Learn more at Kia.com. Kia, movement that inspires. Back here at the Garden, 3.38 to go in the fourth quarter. Knicks have a seven-point lead, 117 to 110 over the Pacers. To reset things, the Pacers are in the bonus, but they still have one foul to give. Indy, this is their timeout, leaving them with two for the remainder of the game. The Knicks have three timeouts remaining, and neither team has used its challenge, so each one, Monica, has that available over this final 338. In addition to those things, the Knicks should look to continue to take care of the basketball. They've been better in that category than they were in game one with just nine turnovers in this one and 11 points off of those turnovers. 14, excuse me. Knicks have lost Ananobi for the remainder of the game. He scored 28 points before injuring his hamstring. Pacers ball. Halliburton steps into a three and knocks it down from the left side. So the Knicks lead is cut to four. 117-113 with 3.20 to play. A quick strike there for Tyrese Halliburton, his sixth three-pointer of the night. Now it's the Knicks' turn. DiVincenzo, right side, inside pass, Hartenstein, and he's fouled going to the basket. Really good spacing by the Knicks, understanding that the Pacers are running a trap at Jalen Brunson. Not too far away that it's a difficult pass, but not so close that it's easy for the Pacers to get back and defend. It triggers the scramble. That's the second time that Dante DiVincenzo has been involved on the baseline and be able to dump the pass to Isaiah Hardenstein coming down the gut of the paint. Foul is against Aaron Neesmith, his second. And it's also the fourth team foul against the Pacers. So the Knicks will also be in the bonus the rest of the way as Hartenstein hits the first. How about the stat line for Isaiah Hartenstein tonight? 13 points, 12 rebounds, and 8 assists in his 36 minutes of work. He's been fantastic. But much like his teammates, everyone has stepped up as he knocks down the second one in this postseason. Two free throws give the Knicks a six-point lead. 119-113, 3.05 to go in the fourth. Halliburton guarded by DiVincenzo, brings it towards the center. He's picked up now by Achua. Right wing, Turner pops out, pump fake, trying to drive on Hartenstein. Fires a contested three, no good. DiVincenzo the rebound, outlet pass to Hart. Isaiah Hartenstein defending on the perimeter. Crowd rising to its feet. We are under three minutes to play. Brunson the ball in his hands, guarded by Nemhart. Knicks by six. Brunson, right side, crosses over, now behind the back dribble, backing his way in, turn, ball away, it's good! That's just disrespectful, but we love it here in New York. 121-113, Knicks by eight, Siakam from the high post, drives on Achua, turns, ball away jumper, comes up short, Hart grabs the rebound, Knicks looking to push, they have numbers, Nice is slow to get up, it's a five on four, Hart, Brunson, up top, fakes the three, left side pass for Hartenstein, Knicks are going to run a little clock here, 2.03 to go in the fourth, Knicks leading by eight, here comes Brunson with seven seconds on the shot clock, bounce pass, DiVincenzo, fake, poked away, gets it back, one second to shoot, floats it up, no good off the glass, Hart the offensive rebound, and it's a foul against the Knicks. I think that's the first time I've seen a foul go against Josh Hart on a rebound play. Hart swooped in for the offensive rebound, but he fouled Tyrese Halliburton, and that's important because the Knicks are in the penalty, so the clock is stopped with 1.51 to go, and Halliburton gets two free throws, the Knicks leading by eight. I know Josh Hart doesn't like that call, but on Garden Vision, he does camp his right forearm in Tyrese Halliburton's back as he makes his way toward the rim. Another game going down to the wire here at the Garden in these playoffs as Halliburton's first free throw is good. Giving him 30 points on the night after he scored six in the series opener. Hits them both. Knicks lead is six. 121-115 with a minute 51 to go. Brunson beats the full court pressure. Now he slows it up in the front court. 
Down to 145 left at the Garden. Brunson right-handed dribble just inside midcourt. Lob pass for Hart. Left side. Drives on Halliburton. Right wing. DiVincenzo. Lines up a three and knocks it down. And the Knicks lead by nine. Six of 11 from the three-point line is Dante DiVincenzo. Halliburton down the lane through traffic. Blocked from behind. Knocked out of bounds with a minute 26 to go. <laughs> I think Isaiah Hardenstein and Precious Atua wanted to make a statement with that play. Not sure who gets credit for the block. It was out of bounds off of Josh Hart. Man, we like to say both of them when something is real good, Pat. Right now it's Hardenstein. Pointer right wing is good by Aaron Neesmith off the inbound. So the Knicks lead is back to six, 124-118. Inbound to Hartenstein. Again, the Knicks have to get it over the timeline. Hartenstein handling, and he's called for a double dribble. Hartenstein called for a double dribble in the backcourt. Tom Thibodeau is out on the court looking for an explanation. I don't see a double dribble on this replay. Now our three officials are having a conversation. I really don't want officiating to be the story of the last two minutes. There's a minute 19 to go in the fourth quarter, and Mark Davis, the crew chief, is waving off the double dribble. No challenge, a discussion among the officials, and Mark Davis has waved off the double dribble. So, there's a minute 19 to go in the fourth. The Knicks still have to inbound in the backcourt, and they have three seconds to get it across the timeline. Here's Hart to inbound, adjacent to the Knicks bench. Brunson trying to curl into the front court. Hart finds Hartenstein. Hart's got to sprint it into the front court and does. Minute 15 to go. Knicks with the ball, up by six. Brunson gets the handoff from Hart. Guarded closely by Nemhart, coming up on a minute five to play. Brunson turns and faces. Crossover dribble, back and forth, working for the left. Pull-up jumper, in and out. Achua grabs the rebound, kicks it out to DiVincenzo. Wide open three, off the side of the rim. Hartenstein fighting for the offensive board. It squirts out of bounds. And it's Nick Ball. I would expect nothing less in the last minute of a Knicks playoff game. The hustle from Achua, from Hartenstein, diving on the floor for that loose ball, saving the possession for the Knicks with 52.9 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Knicks inbound on the baseline. 14 seconds to shoot. Knicks lead by six. Brunson to DiVincenzo in the corner. Up top, Hartenstein points it to Hart. Now Brunson. Shot clock down to eight. Brunson one-on-one -on -one with Nemhart. Crosses over a couple of times. Spins in the paint. Floats it up. And in. Knicks lead by eight with 41 seconds to go. Timeout, Indiana. Appreciate the effort, Andrew Nemhart. But Jalen Brunson continues to get the better of this matchup with his shiftiness, his foot speed, and his strength at the rim. Rick Carlisle just got teed up, partner. Rick Carlisle, a technical foul assessed by Mark Davis. He's still going at him. And now he walks back to the Indiana Pacers bench. After game number one, Rick Carlisle said that he did not want to discuss the officiating late in the game. Clearly unhappy about the double dribble that was overturned against Isaiah Hartenstein on the previous possession. Either way, the Knicks now lead 126 to 118 with 41.7 seconds to go. Now, the Pacers, once cooler heads prevail, which I anticipate, will look to... Oh, it's a tech. The Knicks are going to be shooting. And then the Pacers will get the ball. And then the Pacers will have possession. All right, so... The Knicks will shoot. The Pacers will look to score quickly from behind the three-point line. Although Tyrese Halliburton has gone quiet since the first half, he has knocked down six threes in this ballgame. It's so loud in here. This is amazing. 41.7 seconds to go. Pacers have one timeout remaining. The Knicks have two. Each team will be in the bonus. McConnell is really giving it to Mark Davis 
as Brunson walks down that end of the floor to take the technical free throw. So one shot for Brunson. Has the ball, steps to the line. Brunson sets himself for the technical attempt. It's good. Just, and the Knicks lead by nine. And just to reiterate, schematically, Halliburton has hit one three in the second half. He had hit five in the first half. Neesmith has hit one, and Obi Toppin and Ben Shepard have each hit two. Toppin is not on the floor, though, for the Knicks. Or for the Pacers, excuse me, neither is Shepard. Defensively, Knicks have Brunson, DiVincenzo, Hartenstein, Hart, and Achua. Pacers inbound on the front court. Turner between the circles, hands to Halliburton, off balance three, no good. Rebounded by Achua, quick outlet pass to Brunson. 20 seconds on the shot clock, and he's fouled with 33 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. And the Knicks leading by nine, and the Garden faithful rising to its collective feet. Soak it all in on a day that lived already in New York history. Rick Carlisle just got ejected. The head coach of the Indiana Pacers just received his second technical foul. He is done for the evening with 33.9 seconds to go and the Knicks leading by nine. Playoff basketball. Emotions are high. I'm not sure what the exchange was that led to that second technical foul. But kudos again and much respect to the New York Knicks for maintaining cool under pressure tonight. Brunson's free throw is good. Monica, he played eight and a half minutes in the entire first half. He still is sitting on 29 points right now with two more free throws coming. Knicks lead by 10 at the moment. We wondered if he was going to be at full strength when he returned. 11 of 18 seems pretty efficient and pretty close to full strength from number 11. The MVP chance persisting at the Garden. First free throw is no good. This is the first on the personal foul. So one more free throw for Jalen Brunson. The Garden crowd here saying hello to former friend Reggie Miller, who was on the TNT broadcast down below us. Brunson misses both of them. 30 seconds to go. Knicks lead is 10. Halliburton kicks it out. Turner, right side three. No good. DiVincenzo, the rebound in traffic. There's a one-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. That doesn't matter because Neesmith fouls DiVincenzo with 22.5 seconds to go. These will be Dante DiVincenzo's first free throws of this ball game. Wow. A late tip to this one. Jalen Brunson misses a quarter and some change. OG Ananobi, after a torrid start, leaves the ball game in the third after dropping 28 points, four rebounds, and three assists. And the Knicks just keep plowing away. It's remarkable as DiVincenzo hits the first free throw. The Knicks essentially played a quarter and a half without Brunson in the first half and a quarter and a half without Ananobi in the second. DiVincenzo hits the ball. Knicks lead by 12. Halliburton a deep three is good. The lead is nine with 17.6 seconds to go. Hart having trouble getting it in. Does to Achua. Hart gets it back into the front court for Precious Achua. The Pacers will concede this one. Clock ticks down. Precious Achua will dribble it out. And the Knicks take a two games to nothing lead, pulling out a 130 to 121 victory over the Indiana Pacers. What a tremendous game. It only continues to confirm what we've learned about this team already. Their belief in one another, their work, their effort, they continue to find a way. And again, the monster minutes from Josh Hart. Another 48-minute performance from him. Woo! And just 12 points from your bench. But the Knicks take a 2-0 lead in this series. Knicks essentially played the second half with six players. 
One of those six players joining us outside the Knicks locker room right now. Isaiah Hartenstein, Pat O'Keefe, Monica McNutt up here in the booth. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Wow. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm always good. I'm always good. I'm always good. <laughs> Another unbelievable, intense performance for you and your teammates. Take me to that third quarter, Isaiah. You guys are down by 10 at halftime. Not sure whether or not Jalen's going to be able to give it a go in the third quarter. And the way you turn the game around at that point, what went into that spurt? Um, I mean, starting in the locker room. I mean, um, we came in there. We didn't know if Jalen was coming back or not. So we were just going with the mindset. We just got to stay locked in. Um, we know we can come back. We've been doing it all year. But then um, for Jalen to be a leader like that and um, still come back was huge. Um, a lot, it takes a lot of mental toughness to uh, play through to, um, stuff like that. So we were just grateful that he came back. Isaiah, for you, Nine, or excuse me, 14 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists. Yeah. You, you as an offensive hub and an offensive threat, how are you individually preparing to help continue to make your impact felt by your team? Um, just doing that whatever the team needs. I mean, um, they're being real aggressive with uh, Jalen, so I'm just um, giving them another another option that he can kind of get easier buckets from. Um, the team just trusted me, so um, yeah, it worked out. Isaiah, can you explain to us what it is about this team with your mental toughness? You mm-hmm. lose Brunson in the first half, yeah. you lose Ananobi in the second half, and you guys just keep on going and grind out another win here tonight. Uh, I mean, we've been doing it all year. I mean, Sadly to say, we've been doing it all year, so we've been prepared yeah. for it. So, um, but again, um, guys, like, you're precious for us with you tonight. I mean, um, a lot of people don't know when you're not playing, playing that much to come in and then, especially in the playoff series, to have, have big moments in the playoff series with you. So, um, it's a, it says a lot about a lot of characters in our locker room. And our a huge performance for you as well. Okay, Isaiah, yeah, get some rest. Congratulations. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Isaiah Hartenstein, you mentioned his stat line, Monica, a double-double, nearly a triple-double with those eight assists. Brunson comes back from injury, scores 29 points, most of that coming in the second half. OG Ananobi with 28. Josh Hart hasn't come off the floor since we were in Philadelphia last Honestly, week. Honestly, legitimately, right? What did Ray say? It was nine quarters? Yeah, now nine th- quarters? Yes. And now up to 13? Yes. Woo! Goodness gracious. I don't know exactly what the regimen is, but shout out to all of the support staff on the Knicks in terms of helping these guys take care of their bodies because they are leaving it all out on the floor. And, of course, the basketball head coach Tom Thibodeau and his staff, the basketball is prepared. They obviously are competitors. But the intensity that they've been able to maintain, it really takes your breath away. And I know that GameBridge Fieldhouse is going to be rocking. Those Pacers fans are going to be waiting for the Knicks to arrive. But I have no doubt that this team is going to show up and continue to be, as as Isaiah said to us, who they've been all season long. A day off tomorrow, a much-needed day off, but a travel day. It's on to Indianapolis, where game number three will be played on Friday night. We've got plenty to talk about on the post-game show. That's coming up next with Dan Grassa. Knicks lead this series two games to nothing after a 130 to 121 win over the Pacers here at Madison Square Garden. You're listening to New York Knicks basketball on ESPN New York and the MSG Radio Network. It all started on a rainy Sunday and I was enjoying a peaceful drive before the arrival of the in-laws when... It's a disaster. That sneaky dog of yours got up on the counter and gobbled up the cake. So I can pick up... It's gotta be from the place off Highway 9. Hurry, they're almost here. Luckily, my Nissan Ultima was built to handle the unexpected. With available intelligent all-wheel drive, I was able to save the day without a slip-up. You made it! Piece of cake. Drive the Nissan Ultima. Now get 0% APR financing on a new 2024 Nissan Ultima SR VC Turbo. Shop at your local Nissan store or at NissanUSA.com. Intelligent all-wheel drive cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. For well-qualified buyers, subject to Nissan Motor Acceptance Company credit approval. See dealer for financing details. Ends June 3rd, 2024. 
I'm a New Yorker. I want to contribute to public safety. I want a six-figure salary. I want to get paid after I retire. I want to take my kids on vacation. New York City Department of Correction Officer jobs are available now for strong, brave, bold New Yorkers with problem-solving and communication skills. Most earn more than $85,000 in their first year. Register today. Search the word City Exams on your phone. Click, then scroll to Correction Officer. Uh, serve with a purpose. Take the test. Join. Discover. New York City Corrections. Take the test. If you have experience working with young people, there are many who need your experience. Become a youth development specialist where you'll supervise and support young people in detention. It's challenging and rewarding. It's a union job with a $51,000 starting salary. It's using your life experience to make a positive impact on the lives of young New Yorkers. NYC residency not required. Apply to become a youth development specialist today at nyc.gov slash YDS. Welcome to the New York Knicks post-game show. Now here's Dan Grassa. Hey, we welcome you into the New York Knicks post-game show. Dan Grassa with you. Well, you're not going to see many games like that that we just witnessed at Madison Square Garden. Jalen Brunson departs with an injury late in the first quarter, misses the entire second quarter. Knicks trail by 10 at halftime. Brunson's status uncertain. And on the anniversary of Willis Reed making his triumphant return to the floor in 1970, helping the Knicks to their first championship, Brunson returns for the start of the second half. Plays the entire second half. Oh, by the way, the Knicks lose their leading score for the night, OG Ananobi, in the third quarter to a hamstring injury and doesn't return. The team's return blows in the fourth quarter but the Knicks find a way again another mark for this resilient group they defeat the Pacers 130 to 121 at Madison Square Garden and now lead the best of seven two games to none so much to unpack and let's do it right now with the dynamic duo that we're on the call for the game Pat O'Keefe and Monica McNutt Monica we've been watching basketball playoff basketball for a long time I don't know if we've ever seen a game unfold the way that one did tonight uh, I'm with you, Dan, because, woo, like, if if the nature of the Knicks series already didn't have our hearts beating enough, you had to add in the Broadway-style theater of <laughs> your star going early to a curtain close, and then you lose another star, and then a triumphant return on the anniversary, like you mentioned, of the Willis-Reed affair. Like, woo, could not pack more drama into a game and end uh, any happier than Knicks fans should be tonight. Absolutely. And Monica, I know you've got to run to do some TV. We'll talk again on Friday night. But, Pat, let's pick up the conversation there because there's so many different avenues I think that you can go in this one. You think about how Indiana played that first half, right? The pace, no pun intended, was suited to the way that they like to play basketball. Very up and down the floor, high scoring. I mean, look, in that first half... They were on pace to score close to 150 points. So you could give the Knicks credit defensively for stepping up in quarter number two, but let's start with Jalen Brunson. The fact that he was able to come back, and we'll get some more information from Tom Thibodeau just to the extent of the injury and whatnot, but he looked like normal Jalen Brunson in the second half. Well, it's funny. We were speaking, Monica and I, during the first time out of the third quarter. What do we think? How does he look? It, it looked like when he came back initially, he wasn't trying to do too much. Dante DiVincenzo was actually bringing the ball up more often than he usually does. And Josh Hart, Brunson was playing off the ball a little, presumably to see how the foot would respond. But you're right, Dan. By the end of this game... When we're in the fourth quarter and it's a 1-2-3 possession game and it's closeout time, they put the ball in Brunson's hands and absolutely nothing was different from the way that these playoffs have played out so far. He was fantastic with his footwork inside the paint, slithering through traffic, getting to the basket, his turnaround jump shots. It was vintage Jalen Brunson despite that foot injury and that enabled the Knicks to close this win out. Pat, I don't know if you have your binoculars nearby, but if you can check out onto the floor, has Josh Hart left the court yet? Because we know that he doesn't leave the floor ever, right? All but two minutes the guy has played in the last few games for this basketball team. It's just remarkable, and it was that type of effort tonight from not just him, but the other guys who saw action and lagged and logged major minutes in this game. They don't find a way to win without the contributions. The old saying, all hands on deck, I think it was appropriate tonight. It's really unbelievable what they're doing. And I said this to Monica at the end of the broadcast. They essentially, once OG Ananobi went down, they played this last quarter and a half of this game with a six-man rotation. They had Hart, Hartenstein, DiVincenzo, Brunson, McBride, 
and Precious Achua, who logged big minutes in this game. Josh Hart came out of the game late in the second quarter for a brief rest in game number six last week in Philadelphia. That was the last time he left the floor. He has now played ten consecutive full quarters. The second half in game six against Philly, and he has not come off the floor in this entire series. And he does everything. You know, he guards the perimeter. Uh, this, In this case, it was Tyrese Halliburton, one of the best perimeter players for the Indiana Pacers. He's been scoring. Uh, he hit one three-pointer tonight. It was a huge one. And we've spoken about this before, Dan. He's the kind of guy who, even though he doesn't shoot the three at a very high percentage, late in the game, when the ball leaves his hand, you just feel good about it. And he knocked down a big one tonight. Rebounding, 15 more rebounds, 7 assists, a block shot, a steal. He's literally giving the Knicks everything that he has, and they need it because every single one of these games is down to the wire, and they don't have a ton of margin for error. And just the mental and physical toughness of this team is allowing them to be in position where they are right now. One other guy I want to single out before we say goodbye here, and that's Dante DiVincenzo, because it's interesting. The games that he shows up, like you saw tonight and like he has the last couple of games, it generally means good things for the Knicks. When he has scored in double figures in the playoffs, Pat, the Knicks are now 4-0. Last three games in particular, he's made 16 three-pointers. He's averaging 25-plus points. And when you are shorthanded and when you are looking for other players to step up and help with the scoring load, boy, it's timely that now he is discovering the guy that we've seen for pretty much the bulk of the regular season. Well, you go back to the game that Julius Randle got hurt and OG Ananobi also left for a prolonged period of time right after that. January 29th, from that point to the end of the regular season, Dante DiVincenzo was the clear-cut, no-questions-asked second scoring option on this Knicks team. He was a 21-point-per-game scorer over that stretch. And the first five games of the Philadelphia series, he struggled. He was averaging just around 10 points per game. There were a couple of games where... Deuce McBride was on the floor in the fourth quarter, and DiVincenzo was on the bench. And then his breakout game came in the closeout of game six when he scored 23 points and also played terrific defense on Tyrese Maxey. That 23-point performance was a playoff career high. He followed that up with 25 in game one of this series for a new playoff career high. And now he has set that mark again for the third consecutive game with 28 points here tonight. And again, big three-pointers early. And let's go back to the group that was on the floor in the second quarter, Dan, because, look, I've got to be honest with you. Monica and I are calling this game. I'm calling the game with one eye on the tunnel to see if or when Jalen Brunson's going to come back on the floor. And he didn't until halftime to warm up. So not sure when he was going to come back. The fact that the Knicks went into the locker room only down by 10 points, well within striking distance, set themselves up for the second half. It allowed Brunson to come back, do what he did in the second half, and then, of course, you lose Ananobi for the last quarter and a half, but at that point, nothing was going to stop this team on this night. But DiVincenzo was instrumental in the Knicks being within striking distance in the first half, and then he hit some huge shots in the fourth quarter. And no doubt about it, in that third quarter instrumental, really setting the stage for the fourth quarter, Knicks outscore Indiana essentially by a two-to-one margin and kind of playing at their own game, beating them at their own game, and just a remarkable effort from a shorthanded group tonight who essentially saw seven guys see the floor. Alec Burks played for less than a minute at the end of that first half, but just a remarkable effort for this team, and now they're halfway to a trip in the Eastern Conference Finals. It's quite remarkable. Pat, great job, as always always by you and Monica. We'll talk again on Friday night, which I assume will be a pretty eventful atmosphere there in Indiana. (laughs) It has been before, and I'm sure it will be again. We'll talk to you then. Thanks, Dan. All right, Pat. Great job as always. There's Pat O'Keefe. He and Monica McNutt have the call. A 130 to 121 Knicks come from behind victory over the Indiana Pacers. We are just getting started here on the New York Knicks postgame show. We come back. We'll take a listen to the highlights. We'll get some locker room reaction. We're from the coach, Tom Thibodeau, and we'll also look ahead to game number three, which will be Friday night in Indiana. New York Knicks basketball on ESPN New York and the MSG Radio Network continues right after this timeout. 
Big fans, when deciding to take a charter bus, there's only one choice. That's Best Trails and Travel, New York City's premier charter bus company. Best Trails and Travel has the highest level of charter bus service in New York City and has been servicing New York's leading corporations, professional sports teams, and private individuals for over 25 years. They offer premium customer service and the newest fleet of buses in the industry. Whether you're traveling with family, friends, or colleagues, Best Trails and Travel guarantees you the ultimate travel experience. Visit them at besttrailstravel.com or call them at 212. 212- 206-6974. New York Presbyterian gives you the health care choices you want, like over 450 locations in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and Westchester. Virtual care that lets you connect with us digitally. World-class doctors from Columbia and Wild Cornell Medicine and Health Matters an online source for the latest health and wellness topics and tips. Experience extraordinary health care when and where you need it. Stay amazing. New York Presbyterian. Restrictions apply. When you drive a vehicle so reliable it's backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Visit your local Kia dealer today to see what you're capable of in a vehicle that inspires confidence around every corner. Kia. Movement that inspires. Call 800-333-4KIA for details. Always drive safely. Limited inventory available. Warranties include 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain and 5-year, 60,000-mile basic. Warranties are limited. See retailer for details. Get a double-digit bonus exclusively for Knicks fans from Food Bazaar Supermarket. Take $10 off your order of $50 or more when you shop online at shop.foodbazaar.com. Plus, your first delivery is free. Go to shop.foodbazaar.com and use promo code FOODSAVE10 for the largest selection of international foods and all-star lineup of the freshest meat, seafood, and produce. And $10 off your first order of $50. Use promo code FOODSAVE10 at shop.foodbazaar.com. For the New York Knicks post game show, after a 130 to 121 Knicks victory over the Indiana Pacers, they now lead the best of seven, two games to none. So the Knicks best parts of the game brought to you by the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association. Let's take a listen to the highlights as to how this one all unfolded. And coming into tonight's game, you knew the Knicks would be even more shorthanded. Mitchell Robinson suffering a stress injury on that left ankle, so he will now be gone for the remainder of this playoff journey. So instead, it would be the rest of Tom Thibodeau's group that would have to pick up the slack to get this one done. And... Mitchell Robinson's fellow center, Isaiah Hartenstein, got the Knicks off and running early offensively. Right wing, and Novi off the pump fake to the rim again. Lays it up, no good. Hartenstein, the offensive rebound, the putback is good off the glass. Early 13-10 lead for the Knickerbockers, and they were doing their damage in the paint, as a matter of fact. Ten of the first 13 points the Knicks scored came in that paint area. But the Knicks would continue to get out and run, and the shots would fall, and Jalen Brunson would see the lead grow to double digits. McConnell brings it right baseline, cross court to Halliburton, one touch pass, Neesmith three, too strong, Brunson a one-handed rebound, with his head up, a three on three for the Knicks, he pulls up for three, right side, knocks it down, and the Knicks lead 24-13. All is right with the world at this point for the Knicks. They go on a 15-3 to run. They're up 24-13. to But moments after that, less than a half a minute, as a matter of fact, Jalen Brunson would depart this game with the Knicks up 7, 24-17. No word was given as to why he would go to the locker room. We would later find out that he was being treated for a foot injury and he would be questionable to return. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. The Pacers, though, perhaps coincidentally with Brunson not on the floor would go on a little spurt of their own, make it 11 nothing. Halliburton the rebound. It's the drive to lead his feet, right corner. Neesmith three is good. Nine straight for the Pacers. It's 24-22. And so the Pacers would eventually get this one even at 24 apiece, and they would just continue on. Tyrese Halliburton, who struggled in game number one, only scoring six points. Well, he was already at double figures before the first quarter would end. Looks up by two, McConnell underneath the basket, circling, kicks it out to Shepard, and now Halliburton leads it back for McConnell, right wing, pops the three, front rim no. Rebound taps out into the hands of Halliburton, who fires a straight on three, knocks it down, and the Pacers lead 29-28. 29-28, Indiana, and as we said, Halliburton in double figures already, he only had six points in game number one. A high-scoring affair in the first 12 minutes, we would be tied at 36 apiece. 
at the end of one quarter of play. Very odd, but the Knicks, how about this, shooting 76% from the floor in the opening quarter and didn't even have a lead to show for it as we were even at 36 apiece. We begin the second quarter, still no Jalen Brunson out on the floor, but Indiana was starting to gain some momentum with Brunson in the locker room. But OG Ananobi was the one, at least in that first half for the Knicks, who took on the brunt of the scoring for this team, whether it was in the paint or even beyond the arc. Here's McBride, left side of the arc, Hart, left wing, Ananobi lines up at three and he knocks it down. And OG Ananobi, the hot hand early, pulls the Knicks back within a point. 44-43 Indiana, 15 points for OG Ananobi to begin, or excuse me, in the first half up until that point. Now, Miles Turner had himself a relatively quiet night, and his first field goal of the night, though, made pretty much everybody in Madison Square Garden take notice. Halliburton quickly the other way, thought about pulling up for three. On the right wing, it's Shepard. Neesmith, cross-court pass inside. Turner, a one-handed thunderous slam inside. Five-point lead for Indiana there at 59 to 54 and it was in the, that part of the second quarter where we got the report that Jalen Brunson dealing with a sore right foot and his status was in question as to whether or not he was going to be able to return we heard from Tyrese Halliburton in that first quarter knocking down a big three well there was more to that to come in the second quarter 61 54 320 to go Pacers lead by seven Halliburton as the ball is knocked away gets it back knocks down a three-pointer and the Pacers have their largest lead at 64 to 54. Ten point lead for the Indiana Pacers there. Halliburton, 19 points. So a far cry from what we saw from the All Star in game number one. We would get to halftime and the Pacers would still have that double digit lead at 73 to 63. Now, we mentioned Jalen Brunson not playing at all in the second quarter. Since he left the game, Indiana had a 17 point advantage on the scoreboard, 56 to 39. So we entered halftime still up in the air regarding Brunson's status. Well, much like Willis Reed on this date 54 years ago, Jalen makes a return out the tunnel onto the floor, went through warm-ups with the team to start the second half and pronounced himself good to go and he would never leave the floor for the entire second half. Incredible. But others started to pick up their game as well with Jalen's presence in, namely Dante DiVincenzo. High post is Hartenstein. Turns and faces the basket. Hartenstein looking for DiVincenzo. Cutting back door to the lane. Slams it down with one hand over Turner. Knicks down seven at that point, but you could feel the momentum starting to grow. They were getting a little bit more comfortable. And then Jalen Brunson himself, who we didn't even know if he would return to the game, he did more than just return. Here's Brunson stepping through the lane, flips it up and in, and the foul! Knicks within two at that point, 79-77. to 77. The Garden crowd was getting more and more electric, and he could feel the momentum starting to shift at that point. OG Ananobi, who had a great night offensively, well, put the Knicks on top in the third. Brunson spins towards the left wing, right side pass Hart. One dribble, right corner pass, and Ananobi for three! And the Knicks are on top, 82-79. 25 for OG, four three-pointers. How about a 14 nothing run for the Knicks at that point to seize control? 21-6 to to start the third quarter. And for a finishing touch in on that third period, how about Jalen Brunson doing the honors? Now Brunson working from the left side. Pull up, left elbow, jumper, rattles in and out. Rebound batted by Jackson into the hands of Hartenstein. Up top, Brunson fires a three. Front rim, and it falls in. Everything coming up, Jalen Brunson at that point. Knicks had an eight-point lead at the end of the third, 99-91. They outscore the Pacers 36-18 to in the third quarter. But the news not all good because OG Ananobi, who had 28 points and was leading the team in scoring up until that point, went up awkwardly for a layup in transition with about three and a half minutes to play, stayed down for a while, came up limping. He left the game, did not return the rest of the way, what they were calling a sore left hamstring. Of course, we'll get more in Information from Tom Thibodeau when he meets the media momentarily. But there was still a game to win. 99-91 Knicks heading into the fourth quarter. Indiana, however, would go on a run. A 10-3 spurt to start the fourth quarter. Knicks having a hard time securing rebounds to begin that fourth quarter. Leading the second chance points for the visitors. And they had this game within one. Meantime, though, Jalen Brunson had a big three-point play to give him some breathing room. 
O'Connell pestering. Brunson drives right into him and finishes off the glass. Plus the foul. Brunson to his feet, firing up the crowd here at the Garden. Players feeding off the adrenaline as well. Knicks by five at that sequence. Moments later, well, instead of a three-point play, taking it to the hoop. How about Jalen from the top of the key for a trifecta? Brunson left wing, guarded by Nemhart. Right-handed dribble. Crosses over a couple of times. Pulls up, straight on three-pointer. Knocks it down! With room to spare, a 26-footer there for Brunson. Nicks up five at 110 to 105. About three and a half minutes to play. Precious Achua gets into the act. A thunderous jam into a timeout to give the Knicks a seven-point lead at 117 to 110. But Indiana still would not quit, and the teams would be trading baskets. Brunson hits a nice fadeaway turnaround to put them up eight with just under two minutes to play at 121 to 113. Indiana, though, cuts the lead to within six with about 90 seconds to play. Would they have one last spurt in them, or would the Knicks be able to put them aside? Well, Dante DiVincenzo took care of the latter. Brunson right-handed dribble just inside midcourt. Lob pass for Hart, left side, drives on Halliburton. Right wing, DiVincenzo, lines up a three and knocks it down! And the Knicks lead by nine! 6-3 of the night for Dante DiVincenzo, 124 to 115. Pacers once again would get it to within six, less than a minute to play. And to do the honors to put the dagger in the visitors, how about Jalen Brunson? Now Brunson, shot clock down to eight. Brunson one-on-one with Nemhart, crosses over a couple of times. Spins in the paint, floats it up, and in! Nick lead by eight with 41 seconds to go. Timeout, Indiana. And that would essentially be all she wrote, 130-121, to 121, the Knicks defeat the Indiana Pacers. And that was the Knicks' best parts of the game, brought to you by the New York Structural Steel Painting Contractors Association, painting and repairing bridges and steel structures around New York for over 50 years. Let us pause 10 seconds now to allow stations to identify themselves on ESPN New York and the MSG Radio Network. This is your radio home for New York Knicks basketball. This is 98.7 ESPN, WEPN-FM, New York. Still more to do here on the New York Knicks postgame show. We come back. We'll hear from Josh Hart. We'll hear from the head coach, Tom Thibodeau, as well. And look ahead to game number three coming up on Friday. You're listening to New York Knicks basketball on ESPN New York in the MSG Radio Network. Spectrum One is a big deal. You get Spectrum Internet with the most reliable internet speeds, free advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced security and privacy, and a free Spectrum Mobile Unlimited line with nationwide 5G included, all while saving big. For the big speed, big reliability, and big savings you want, get Spectrum One. Just $49.99 a month for 12 months. Visit Spectrum.com slash big deal for full details. Offer subject to change. Valid for qualified residential customers only. Service not available in all areas. Restrictions apply. NBA fans looking for infusion care that puts you first? ThriveWell Infusion specializes in delivering cutting-edge therapies for rare diseases and autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. Trusted by physicians across specialties, ThriveWell offers private, state-of-the-art infusion suites and slam-dunk treatment from their highly trained medical team. From New York to New Jersey and across Long Island, experience care, comfort, convenience, and compassion like never before at a ThriveWell location near you. Find out more at ThriveWellInfusion.com. ThriveWell. Saving lives, drip by drip. Get a double-digit bonus exclusively for Knicks fans from Food Bazaar Supermarket. Take $10 off your order of $50 or more when you shop online at shop.foodbazaar.com. Plus, your first delivery is free. Go to shop.foodbazaar.com and use promo code FOODSAVE10 for the largest selection of international foods and all-star lineup of the freshest meat, seafood, and produce. And $10 off your first order of $50. Use promo code FOODSAVE10 at shop.foodbazaar.com. When Mercedes-Benz owners choose Open Road of Bridgewater, they choose the best of the best. Because at Open Road Bridgewater, you can be sure to find excellent service, excellent pricing, and first-class experience. And that's why Mercedes-Benz named them the best of the best. They're honored to receive this prestigious award. Choose the best of the best. Choose Open Road of Bridgewater on Route 22 East. Or visit them online at OpenRoadMercedesBenz.com. Back of the New York Knicks postgame show after a 130-121 to Knicks victory 
over the Indiana Pacers. They now lead the best of seven, two games to none. It's time now for tonight's Thriving Player, brought to you by Thrive Well Infusion. We hear now from Josh Hart, who once again never left the floor. 19 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists. And afterwards, caught up with MSG's Bill Pito, Alan Hahn, and Wally Serbiak. Studio, another 48 minutes for Josh. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Damn, he did. All right, so, Josh, you got Jalen Brunson getting hurt in the second quarter. You got OG and Anobi getting hurt late in the third quarter. You're playing all these minutes. All you guys are playing all these minutes. How do you keep winning these games? Um, just a resilient group, man. Um, you know, it, it starts with, uh, you know, the front office, and then it goes to Tiz, and then it goes to, to JB and the rest of us, Jew. Um, this ne next man up mentality, man. So, obviously, we wish we were healthy, uh, but when one guy goes down, man, um, someone else steps up, and we got more than what we need. Josh, take us into the locker room at halftime. What was the mood like, and did you have a conversation with Jalen? Did you know he was going to be coming back in this game? Because the whole building was wondering, mm -hmm. would he return? Um, yeah, didn't, didn't know. Um, you know, and, and when I saw him on the court, I told him just to be smart. Um, but, I mean, that, that's just who he is. He's going to battle. If he, if he can walk, he's going to get out there with us. So, And, you know, we were talking on... Um, at halftime, it was just about our defense. Uh, you know, we scored 63 points, I think it was, I think it was 73-63. Yeah, our, our offense wasn't the problem. It was our defense, and I think we did a better job second half. And now we got to go into a hostile environment in Indiana and, you know, get better. Josh, you've been making huge shots all season, playoffs, this game, and now Dante DiVincenzo also mm -hmm. just making the big shot all the time. How do you guys pull it off and do it? Um, just confidence. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we work hard. We, we, we put our work in. Um, I think that confidence that we have, you know, I'm not going to say never wavers, but, um, when, when it slightly wavers, we all pick each other up and tell you someone that we rely on that we need. And, um, you know, I trust him with the ball in his hands whenever. Josh, I keep telling these guys the key is Mike and Ike's. <laughs> <laughs> the heck with the plant-based diet to Mike and I. Josh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate uh, congrats it. and uh, good luck Friday when the series uh, shifts to Indiana. Thank you. That is Josh Hart with the guys on MSG. And that was tonight's Thriving Player brought to you by Thrivewell Infusion, New York's premier infusion and injection center, saving lives drip by drip. But it's time now to get here from the head coach. Here is Tom Thibodeau meeting with the media moments ago. Yeah, a lot of toughness. That that's sort of, I think the makeup. We know that's his makeup, but that's also the makeup of our team. Uh, I, we, I thought we started the game well. Uh, the end of the first didn't go as well as we would like. Uh, then uh, the second quarter was a problem, but I love the way we responded in the third, and then the way we finished it out in the fourth. Yeah, yeah. So he went in back. They, they worked on him, and then he warmed up. And we didn't know if he was going to be able to go or not. And he he found a way to get it done. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to medical yet. So. Yeah, well, you know, the, they're, it's one of the strengths of their team. Um, and obviously, we're capable of doing better, and we will. Yeah. Yeah, it was huge. I thought he played very well in the fourth quarter. So, we need that from him. Uh, I thought Isaiah was terrific uh, all around, both sides of the ball, playmaking, uh, rebounding, you know, rim protection, hustling. Um and it got us going. And I, I love the rhythm of the team. And then I thought, you know, the double team on Jalen and him finding open guys with the second pass, I think that's huge for our team. And also the offensive rebounding from that, there, you know, there's a lot of good things that we can get from that. Yeah, you know, it's and again, we the mental toughness piece is so important. And so the ability to get through things, you know, uh, to be at your best when your best is needed, even when you may not be feeling your best, you know, and that's who he is. So a great leader. Uh, 
uh, you know, it's it's you know that's such a big part of this franchise, and and rightfully so. Uh, but uh, as I said, the the best part of Jalen is his humility. I, I mean, we could all talk about all the great things he's doing, and, it, and it's remarkable. But to be as humble as he is, on top of that, I think that's what makes him so special. Yeah, it's it's tough. You know, it's, it's not it's not only you know obviously we knew he was going to be aggressive and he was, and then uh, you have you're also dealing with Turner on the pop. Uh, and I thought you know McConnell comes in and he, he poses some problems as well. So you know reading the ball and making the quick decisions and then you you're also dealing with the backside of that and everyone has to work together to make sure that you're not be, being put in a vulnerable position in terms of whether it be a post up or you know an offensive rebound or an open three so there has to be a second third part of that yeah yeah it, it was I thought it's super aggressive and you know he, he he played really really well I thought at the end of uh, game one with uh, with his defensive activity getting into and he picked up right where he left off and I thought that that was huge for us and I thought that's what got us off to the good start that oh, was huge it was huge you know and the way he got him too it was like it was a little bit of everything and yeah, he made a, a nice play, uh, you know, to uh, Isaiah on, on a dribble handoff. We got a dunk, I think, off that. And uh, he ran the floor, hit, hit threes. He was good in transition. He put it on the floor. He attacked the rim. He was decisive. Uh, all, all positive things for us. Obviously, Jalen does a ton of you guys offensively. When he was out, um, and you guys are asking more of Dante, Josh, um, OG, or you got hurt. Like, what did you think of the way those guys kind of Yeah, well, the thing is, it, it, you know, obviously we got to do better. And so, and that's the best. Don't, you know, we can't feel too good. We, and so that's tomorrow we lock in, take a look at the film, make corrections, and get ready for game three. And that is coming up on Friday night in Indiana. But the Knicks will head out there with a two games to none lead in the best of seven. So more for us to do here on the New York Knicks postgame show. We come back, we'll look ahead to that game on Friday. Where the Knicks will look to seize control of the series and take a commanding three games to none lead. You're listening to New York Knicks basketball on ESPN New York and the MSG Radio Network. Hey, John, this is Mike from Massapequa. I want a Kia. Hey, John, this is Rosie from Ozone Park. I want a Kia. Hey, John, this is Frank from Middle Village. I want a Kia. Hi, I'm John Starks. With over 200 vehicles in stock, our all-star team will always put your needs first, making sure you always get a slam-dunk deal here at John Stark Kia. Lease a Kia EV6 for $299 a month with zero down payment. 949 due at signing. No security deposit required. 10,000 miles per year. Excludes tax, title, and MDCs. Expires June 3rd. John Starks Kia. Stand tall. The MB NBA playoffs are here, and the New York Knicks are in. It's time to hit the court with BetMGM, an authorized betting partner of the NBA. Download the BetMGM app and make every playoff game, every vital play mean more than ever. Find out why basketball fans love BetMGM, an official sports betting partner of Madison Square Garden and the New York Knicks. See BetMGM.com for terms. Must be 21 years or older to wager and physically present in New York or New Jersey only. Gambling problem in New York? Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467-369. In New Jersey, call Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Serving contractors, builders, and homeowners in the tri-state area since 1987, Brooklyn Window and Door is New York City's largest stocking dealer of quality Anderson Window and Doors. The professionals at Brooklyn Window and Door will help solve any of your window replacement needs or applications. Visit Brooklyn Window and Door's award-winning showroom to see the complete Anderson product line, including the 400, 100, A and E series. Anderson, built, backed, and serviced like no other window. Visit Brooklyn Window and Door at 185 30th Street in Brooklyn or call 718-WINDOWS. Sports fans, take your game day snack to a whole new level. Cibao Meat Products, Jamoneta Campesino Salami, the MVP of flavor. Whether you're cheering for touchdowns or slam dunks, this Hispanic-style salami is a guaranteed crowd pleaser. Made with the finest ingredients and packed with safety spices, Jamoneta Campesino Salami delivers a burst of savory goodness in every bite. Score big with Cibao Meat, Jamoneta Campesino Salami. Available at your local supermarket. Remember, if you see our logo from the start, put it in your shopping cart. Cibao Meat Products, over half a century of tradition and quality. 
We're back on the New York Knicks postgame show after a 130-121 Knicks victory over the Indiana Pacers. It is time now for the Knicks out-of-town scoreboard driven by Nissan. No other games on the NBA playoffs slate this evening. They'll pick it back up tomorrow. Cleveland will visit Boston, and Oklahoma City will host Dallas. Both game twos with Boston and the Thunder up one nothing, respectively, in those series. The league did hand out its most valuable player award tonight. That went to Nikola Jokic of the Nuggets, his third in the last four years. Jalen Brunson finished fifth in the voting. He received three second-place votes and one third-place vote. That was the Knicks out-of-town scoreboard driven by Nissan. You deserve a car that thrills you, and Nissan's got an exciting full line that'll put goosebumps on your goosebumps. Experience the thrill for yourself. Shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Now, don't forget to stick with MSG through round two for pre- and post-game coverage for every game the Knicks play. Watch on MSG, or you can stream it for free on MSG Plus with an eligible TV subscription. And that is all for tonight. The final score again, Knicks 130.